Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 13.4b. This is the pinnacle of pre-calculus. This is the coolest, best thing. What we did last time was we set up the basics of cis, of cosine plus imaginary sine, and how a plus bi, what we think of as complex numbers, a number with a real part and with a complex imaginary part, is able to be represented using polar coordinates. And what I proved to you last time was that if you have some uh, complex number z sub one, which has got its particular radius and its uh, particular angle, and then you have some other number, z sub two, which has got its own radius and its own angle, that when you multiply these two numbers, all you have to do is multiply their radii and add their angles. And if that wasn't cool enough, which it's pretty darn cool, today we are going to talk about division, exponents, and roots, all of which become geometry when you do them in cis. So hold on, this is gonna get really good. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, so I'm not gonna prove to you division. We did all that proof. You got to have to go dig up all of the cosine conga and sine swing last time already for us to be able to prove multiplication. I'm just going to tell you that division of Z1 divided by Z2 is the radii divided and the angles subtracted. I think you can probably see how that all would go down and I don't think I need to prove that to you. What I will prove to you, because it's very simple, is to then say, all right, so let's just take some z number and let's uh, raise it to a power. Well, we'll start off with the easiest one. We'll just say, well, what is z squared? Well, z squared is just z times z. And BTW, you can see why slashing your z's is crucial here. You would get confused between z's and twos if you didn't, so that would, I, I always recommend slashing your z's and your sevens. So anyway, um, that we know how to multiply that, that that is always just the radius of the first times the radius of the second, and then you take their two angles, which are both called theta, and you add them. Well, what's theta plus theta? What's anything plus anything is two times that thing, and then r times r is also known as r, ah, r squared. So getting ahead of myself. So you can see that if we square something, we're just going to um, square the radius and then multiply the angle by two. And on and on and on, we could show you for any exponent n that we are just going to have the radius to the n and then n times the angle. Now you may think to yourself, well, who cares about that? That's not anything wonderful. Well, watch this example. If, we, if I asked you to do 1 plus i to the 8th, you would look at that and you'd say, that's going to take me forever. I've got to do i plus i times i plus i and then foil that all out and then multiply in another i plus 1 and, and another i plus 1 and just on and on and on. It would take you a long, long time to multiply it by itself eight times. But in cis format, where is 1 over in the 1s and 1 in the i's? That's where it is right there. The angle is 45 degrees, and the hypotenuse is root two, so that's the same as saying root two cis 45 to the eighth. And now I've got to just take uh, two, root two to the eighth, and cis of eight times 45. So that's the same as two to the half to the eighth, which is two to the fourth. 2, 4, 8, 16, and then 4 times uh, 45, well 2 times 45 is 90, 2 times that is 180, 2 times that is 360. So there's the answer, but again, if I just need to demonstrate that out on the complex coordinate system, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is right there. It's got, and I've turned 360 degrees, it's got no imaginary part and no uh, negative imaginary part. It's just pure positive real numbers. So that's 16. So this horrible equation 
that is super difficult to expression, super difficult to simplify, under sys becomes a snap to solve. So now we come to a what can be difficult if you're not a visual person. The geometry people are gonna love this. This is going to be mind-blowingly wonderful for them. And the algebra people, I'll describe the algebra, it'll look hard, but then you do it a couple times and even you will love it too, okay? So de Mouvre and some other guys who were thinking about math, they said, okay, we know that the square root of four is two, but it can also be uh, negative two. That works. And so then, okay, so there are, there, there's two solutions to a square root. And then we think about, okay, well, what about a fourth root of 16? Well, that's like taking the square root of the square root. So that's, that's the same as saying the square root of the square root of 16. And the square root of 16, though, um, like, all positive numbers has two answers. That that's gonna be the square root of four and the square root, or the square root of negative four, because negative four times negative four is also positive 16. So this one has two solutions, two and negative two, but then this one has two solutions, two i and negative two i. So there are four solutions to a fourth root problem. So this got de Mouvray thinking. He said, shouldn't there be three solutions to a cube root problem? Shouldn't there be more than just two times two times two is eight? Yeah, but shouldn't there be two more? There are. So, so the way he thought about that was he said, okay, so what is the square rooting of four look like in polar complex? Well, if I'm out there at four, and then I plot the solutions, the solutions are there and there, and if I'm, I'm not gonna draw all 16, but if I'm somewhere over here at 16, then the solutions are um, here and here and here and here. So what must it look like then if I'm trying to find uh, the solutions to eight, to cube root eight. So what de Mouvre theorized was that, okay, so these, this is the, the four that we were solving over here, and all of these solutions lie on a circle of radius two. That that original, most clear-cut, obvious answer, what is the square root of four, what is the cube root of eight, what is the fourth root of 16, that that two, it, the original easy answer, uh, the basic answer, is telling you the radius of a circle and that all the answers lie on this circle and then they are equidistant apart. That, that when we did a, a square root, a second root, we cut the circle into two pieces. When we did a fourth root, we cut the circle into four pieces. When we cut the circle into, for cube roots, we must cut it into three pieces. Aha. So, where must those be? Okay, so if we're just gonna think about it in cis for a minute here, that the cube roots of uh, eight cis zero, that the, why do I keep writing eight? That the, the cube roots of eight cis zero um, must be, okay, so the original one is two cis zero, and then if we're gonna take 360 degrees and divide it into three parts, then we need to go every, well, how, what is that divided to? Well, three goes into three once, goes into six twice, good. We need to be 120 degrees apart every time, okay? So that would mean that one solution is two cis zero, the next solution is two cis 120, and the next solution is two cis 240. And if you extrapolate those out, we did that uh, last time, uh, that that one is negative one plus i root three, and if we did this one, it would be negative one minus i root three, that if you put those in your calculator, now be sure to press mode and scroll down all the way to the bottom and switch into A plus BI mode, B in complex mode, but if you put that number in parentheses, 
and i is second decimal. If you put that number in your calculator and raise it to the third power, you will get eight. And de Mouveway, of course, just did it out by hand and figured that out and was blown away and realized, wow, this can be done with geometry. If I want to find the fifth root, then I just take a circle, divide it into five parts. If I want to find the 360th root, I just take a circle and divide it into 360 parts. So what we're saying is when you've got a root that you need to solve, you want the nth root of r cis theta, that you're, you're going to have a circle that is got a, a, a radius of the, all the solutions are going to lie on a circle, and the radius of that circle, the radius of that circle, is equal to the normal way that you find the nth root of r. So you might need to practice, if some of these are going to be decimals, you might need to practice pressing math and doing the x root of a number on your calculator. So you need to, you need to find out the original radius of it, and then the distance between all the spokes of, so there's like five, so that the, 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 the spacing, the spacing is equal to 360 divided by n. So if you're taking the fifth root, you chop it up into five parts. If you're taking the eighth root, you divide it up into eight parts. But you also need to start, and this is the part that my example didn't illustrate so well, is that you need to start that the initial angle is, uh, the initial angle is equal to theta divided by n. All right, so let's, let's do one of these to try to be um, more clear here. So if I asked you to find, we'll keep doing cube roots, to do the cube root of negative eight. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to convert this into cis. So where are we? If we've got a number line and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, negative eight in the real and nothing in the imaginary is over there like that. And we don't wanna use negative radii. We always wanna use positive radii in cis. So the, the, remember we always start off facing this direction. So we need to turn 180 degrees and be facing to the left and then walk out eight units. So this is the same thing as the cube root of eight cis 180. Okay, so make sure that you, you get the, uh, how to convert the number, first of all. We talked about that last time. Rewatch that video if you need to. We're saying You've got to turn some angle to where you're facing where that number is and then walk out the distance to get to that number. So in this case, we turned 180 degrees and we walked out eight units. And now we know that all of our answers are gonna lie on a circle of radius two because the simple root of eight, the simple cube root of eight is two. That this is where all of our solutions must lie on this circle, somewhere on that circle. The spacing of, uh, so, so, the, so the, the radius is two, the spacing is the same as before, that it's um, 360 divided by the fact that we're taking, I'll put this in a different color, we're taking the cube root, so that's what's gonna get me that the spacing is 120. 360 divided by three is 120. But the initial angle is going to be uh, something different in this case. The initial angle is 180 divided by three, which is 60. So we need to start off at a 60 degree angle and then we need to be evenly spread out even every 120 degrees. So 60 and then 120 later than that. So, so the first one is two cis 60. 60 plus 120 is 180. So two cis 180. And then um, 120 added to that is zero three, so 300, two cis 300. So those are the three numbers and 
the first nice, the, the one, the only nice one there is negative two. The others are going to have root three and stuff in them. So, or just root, three. yeah, they'll be, they'll have some root threes in them. But the point is that we knew, we expected negative two to be one of the answers because negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight. But we can find all the roots of any complex number by drawing circles and cutting them up into cute little pieces. That the basic simple stuff of geometry lets you solve complex equations. That lets you find the, comp the roots, the crazy roots, all the roots of complex numbers. That God has laid out the world in such a way that the processes that you do when you're drawing circles and making cute little shapes then lets you solve these things over there. Over and over again, mathematicians are blown away that something that somebody did in number theory helps them with combinatorics or that something that someone was doing in um, a weird kind of calculus pays off in quantum physics. Over and over and over again, God has interlinked the universe and made everything work together for human beings good. See you soon.